XRP, XRP, XRP. The Bulls are getting ready to run out the gates, family. Can't you feel it? Hi, Vibe Assets. Welcome back to today's show. I got a good one for you today. You know every time that you click on this channel, the content is going to be bullish. Go ahead and give me a follow on my Twitter page at High Vibe Assets. Without further ado, let's go ahead and kick off today's show. Is XRP today a, a, a security? I think very you know, clearly it is not. Um, and and so something that I think I think you yourself, Greg, uh, uh, brought, brought up in the past, the, the mission statement of the SEC or, or, or high ranking in that multifaceted mission statement is consumer protection and and if you are going to seek to disgorge 1.34 billion that may have been you know achieved or or, or sold um violating again some of those concepts of um of uh, asymmetrical information and selective disclosure the question is you know how much damage are you going to cause to consumers in that in that pursuit and, and I think in this case, uh, the, the answer has been, you know, a significant uh, amount. It's, it's hard to measure, of course, but, uh, but obviously it's created a crisis for, uh, for Ripple and for XRP. Uh, predictably, uh, exchanges like Coinbase, uh, who has to think about the fact that it's going public, although Coinbase has never been a big fan of Ripple's to begin with, but, but, uh, but with the, you know, additional complication of also being about to go public that that was a uh, that was writing on the wall so for us uh until until the complaint is adjudicated against uh ripple specifically citing that xrp is a security today which would be the, the part that would uh, affect our business um we we are continuing to support and i think um every legal mind that we have um, interaction with and, and you know i'd like to think we, we've chosen lawyers well uh, one of our lawyers is in fact the ex-head of the sec's new york office all of them all of them uh, feel that it's fairly clear that that xrp is not um, a security today so uh we'll, we'll, we'll wait and see how this thing plays out but um I, i'd be surprised if there was an outcome that suggested that xrp was a security and if there were that that wouldn't just be disastrous for for xrp it would be disastrous for dozens and dozens of crypto ecosystems that went through a similar trajectory this is the moment in time to where you're going to find out who actually understands blockchain technology cryptocurrency technology or who's in this space and who's in this brand new game just trying to make a quick buck you see, we're about to experience an extreme value explosion of digital assets. And there's going to be a lot of money to be made really on either side. You got regulations coming in. You have real world adoption. Big incumbent players have already given the green light to crypto. So 100% 2023 is the year of the digital asset. But the most important thing about this time is does these assets actually have utility? Is anybody actually in the real world using it? You see, because we've seen the biggest conglomerates in the world already given the green light to crypto. Which protocols are they going to be using? What blockchain systems and what tokens do they entrust in to continue to move their business? We've seen Ripple and XRP essentially plant its flag through every use case that we've seen so far in digital assets. You want to go into tokenization, crypto custody, business to business payments, smart contracts, micro payments, FX settlements. We already know about cross border payments as being the number one use of choice. This is the moment in time. Things are about to explode. 2023 is the year of the digital asset. And XRP is about to go intergalactic. <laughs> that's guaranteed. And that's how we're going to start off today's show, family, with a bang. Make sure that you hit that like button. Make sure that you hit that subscribe button. Let's go ahead and dive into this content. We got XRP quietly being relisted on Canada's exchange. Bid buy. I wonder why. 
Remember how uphold, never folded, always held XRP on their exchanges. This is the trend that we are about to start seeing right now because there is no more room to wait on Judge Annalisa Torres. She's about to step on the stage with a big gavel. We're going to be talking about that here real soon. Let's not forget, family, that XRP was one of the first digital assets to ever establish real world growth. Remember the tip box? For you XRPL, for you XRP OGs, 2015-2017, the XRP tip pot is back. You're going to be able to use XRP as a medium of exchange to send donations and to send tokens back and forth on the world's largest platform, especially in America when you're talking about Twitter, the most active users. You see, Judge Annalisa Torres is about to step on the scene because everything that was laid out in front of us this is what's coming up next. We've been needing a catalyst to send this forward. The Bill Hinman emails came out and essentially the market did not respond to it, even though that it is in evidence when you're talking about the summary judgment. Let's not forget about that. I'm talking about price and market things, right? Even with the lawsuit, the retracements, we still need something in at this time right now to send this and to the stratosphere. And it's going to be Judge Annalisa Torres. Let's look at the library case real quick, right? The library judge said the specific issues wasn't litigated when you're talking about the secondary sales. So again, we still don't have it in court order. We know that the courts are going to make the rules that cryptocurrencies you're talking about in secondary markets are not securities, right? It didn't happen in a library suit. It hasn't happened in any suit that we've seen thus far in this brand new digital asset space. But Judge Torres, she has to address it in the Ripple case because Ripple raised the issue in its second affirmative defense in its answers to the SEC amended complaint. And let's going to click right here. I'm going to read it for you. It says, look, the second defense that Judge Torres, she has to acknowledge in court. And this is what's going to send it. This is what's going to make Congress come right after with their bills. This is what's going to make everyone start to come out with their use cases on this case alone. They said in their second defense that Ripple did not violate Section 5 of the Securities Act because XRP is not a security or an investment contract. And Ripple's distributions or sales of XRP are not investment contracts. No registered, no registration was required in connection with any distribution or sale of XRP by Ripple. This is the catalyst that's going to send everything, family, I'm telling you. And I've been telling everyone since day one. Yeah, we could have maybe waited on the 118th Congress to do something, but they're limited in their power as well. Goldman, Gary Gensler, the incompetent cop on the beat, we understand that he was rubbing shoulder to shoulder with his skull and bone boys. This is going to be the catalyst that's going to make sure that XRP is going to capture that number one spot. And I believe in the summary judgment. Look, Ripple is not going to get a 100% win, man. You can't just go out and just get a 100% win. Ripple is going to have to come off for some of that XRP, I believe. They're going to have to come off a lot of cash, man. You know, $200 million on top of the $200 million that they spent, of course. But ultimately... When we get that judgment that Judge Torres has to address whether if XRP is a security on the secondary sales, do they not institute investment contracts? She's going to have to judge on that. She's going to have to rule on that on paper in black and white family. When that judgment comes out, I'm telling you, you're talking about $1 trillion, $2 trillion, $3 trillion of liquidity immediately being dumped into the greatest digital asset ever created, XRP. This is what Rosie Rios was telling us. This is why you have the former 43rd treasurer of the United States that has publicly told us that we are moving to the next generation of money. Her job was to come up on the board of Ripple and help them institute the foundation and the infrastructure or the railroads for the new generation of money. XRP's primary purpose 
is facilitating cross-border payments while other cryptos find their values in speculation. This is what we have been seeing thus far. <laughs> Family, there's only about 20 digital assets that has real-world utility that actually people are building on the infrastructure to increase its interoperability to be able to last in this space. China's latest moves brings this point home. This is the reason why Rosie Rios is sitting on the board at Ripple. All roads lead through Ripple. All roads are leading through XRP. And this is the moment when you look at a chart like this, family, we're right here. I'm telling you, right before everything kicks off, right before everything that you've been holding for all of these years, now you are about to receive your return on your investment. And when these things pop off, family, we've seen how XRP moves. It's going to fly and it doesn't stop. Make sure that you have your exit plans. This is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor, but make sure your exit plans or what you are in this space for, make sure you have it locked down. Everybody on the high vibes channel, especially the high vibes, we're in it for the long game till 2030. But best believe, family, when things take off into the next stratosphere, we're going to get a piece of that pie. And welcome back to our series on the XRP ledger. In this episode, we'll define some basics of tokenization. The XRP ledger was the first blockchain to support the tokenization of a variety of assets. This includes stable coins or other forms of value, anything from US dollars to euros, gold, stocks, and other cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin or Ethereum, and even non-fungible tokens that might represent valuable items like pieces of art or cinema tickets. Tokens are often called issued assets or IOUs on the XRP ledger. This terminology comes from the fact that these assets do not physically live on the ledger. The IOU represents those items of value outside the ledger. It's what somebody will owe the holder of the token. So if a token is issued on the ledger that represents, say, a piece of art, the person who acquires that token is then owed the art that's represented. And any token on the ledger, including tokens for art, fiat currencies, cryptocurrencies, and more, can all be traded directly on the decentralized exchange, or DEX, which we cover in depth in another episode. Anybody can create a token on the ledger, and they don't need a smart contract to do so. It's a native function built into the XRP ledger. It's also fairly simple to tokenize an asset. It only takes a few lines of code or the use of a web interface that walks the creator through the process step by step. To learn more about the fundamentals of the XRP ledger, please watch the next episode. This is what you have to understand. And for most of us as being retail investors, when you listen to a video like that, just showing us exactly how powerful this is, the functionality on how currently with the financial system that we're using, we don't have those capabilities of today. This is why you've seen BlackRock. This is why you've seen Vanguard, Bank of America, Wells and Fargo, Accenture, the biggest conglomerates in the world, trillion dollar asset holding companies give the green light to cryptocurrencies. They know exactly what's coming next. And we must make sure that we know exactly what's coming next, too. This is the reason why Judge Annalisa Torres, again, she has to rule. They have to rule on the fact if XRP or the secondary sales of XRP, the market of the XRP market, is it a security or is it not a security? She does not have to say what she believes that it actually is. She can just come out and say if it's a security or not a security. But we know for a fact that XRP is not a security. A security of what? A security of what company? You have all of these amicus briefs that have been put in this lawsuit to say that they have no ties with Ripple. And especially if Binance has quietly launched XRP options, then you have to understand and you have to know what that means. If according to former CFTC chairman, if there is a futures contract on an asset, it's a commodity. It, if, if there's yield earned, it's a security. But XRP has option contracts, which making these things, family, a commodity. This is what we have to understand, family, that this is the fourth industrial revolution. This is the moment of time to where you have read about in the history books. What do you think the gold rush 
was about family. It was about a time in a moment like we are reading today, like we are in today for an opportunity to change your damn life. With all that in mind, um, how do we deal with this issue of exchange rates and interoperability? How do we get these digital currencies to really just talk to each other? Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a great question. And, and I think when we talk about interoperability, we can, we can see it at least in three different levels. So the first level is how we manage domestic interoperability. So how we generate this digital currency solution and make this speak with the other things that are out there uh, in a little bit in, in the idea of generating a platform so that everyone can connect to that platform and take advantage of the huge uh, network externalities that we can get out of there. The second level is how we manage cross-border transactions, even within the same currency. And that presents a, a certain level of challenges there. But when we talk about cross-currency and cross-border, then we face a, a completely difficult, a difficult and different environment. And we can see three dimensions here. One is the technical dimension. So how we manage to get a system that speaks in a certain cryptographic language to speak with another that speaks another slightly different language. So that is one uh, level of complexity. We need to get the technologies to speak to each other. The messaging element is fundamental. The second dimension, which is much more complicated to solve. So that one, the first one was the easy one, okay? And uh, there is a lot of money that is being put in terms of, of trying to solve these technical issues of, of interoperability. Now, the second one is more complicated. It has to do with liquidity. So imagine that you have a pair of currencies for which there is not a, a complementary demand. You need to go and uh, search for a third party uh, currency in order to make this, uh, this settlement actually happen. And this really complicates things. Uh, so we need to put pieces of technology that can uh, make more efficiency this use of liquidity so that more transactions can be settled. The third dimension, which is even more difficult than the previous one, is how do we manage to get homogeneity in terms of the policy requirements on different countries. And this becomes even more complicated when we think about, for example, AML CFT and principles-based policies, and when we think about risk-based policies. We can code things that are very clearly stated, you know, but when we're talking about principles-based regulation, this thing becomes really complicated, especially in an environment, uh, as Tom said, in which uh, 110 nations might have 110 different ways of, of looking at this. So, so we need work in these three dimensions, technology, liquidity, and also, uh, and more importantly, probably in the policy side of things. Think about AML CFT, but also think about uh, privacy. Uh, different countries have... Thanks for everyone tuning in to today's show. Make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Go ahead and turn on those notifications. This is not financial advice, and I'm not a financial advisor, but please let everyone know that the high vibe said that the bulls are getting ready to run out the damn gates.